At this stage of the course, we have covered the core of thermodynamics too, meaning that we spent almost like two thirds of the semester discussing power cycles. We went through steam power cycles. We tried to modify, the, modify our simple ranking cycle to boost the thermal efficiency. And then we moved on to our gas power cycles. We covered internal combustion engines and also uh, cycles like Brighton cycle, where actually we also tried to maximize its thermal efficiency. Now in this course, the third part, if you want, will be an introduction to different topics, okay? We won't go in depth. For those of you who are interested in going more in depth in the topics, so I recommend taking a, a quarter to specialize in this. So, and what's remaining on our agenda, we still have to cover refrigeration cycles, then we will have gas mixtures, and more specifically, water, vapor, air mixtures, and then at the end we will have combustion and chemical reactions. So the first thing we'll be addressing here and discussing are refrigeration cycles. We all know that refrigeration is extremely important, okay, including to cool down and keep fresh actually your food, medicines, and drinks. Also, since the videos that you are watching are recorded in 2021, so during the pandemic, so COVID-19 pandemic, refrigeration cycles have dragged a lot of attention. And why? Because of the vaccines, and more specifically, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. They have to be kept at a very low temperature of minus 80 degrees C. So you can imagine the complexity of the logistics. So, and our role actually in this chapter is to understand refrigeration cycles. Okay, so we'll start with the simple refrigeration cycle and then we'll make it more complex. Okay, let's say if we would like to go further down in terms of temperature, what do we have to do? And also, if we have to want to scale up our refrigeration cycle, what do we have to do? So, what we'll be discussing in this chapter are refrigeration cycles. Interestingly enough, we don't start actually from nothing because we already have a knowledge regarding refrigeration cycles. Because in thermodynamics one, when we try to introduce closest statement of the cycle of thermodynamics, we defined a Carnot refrigerator. And this is what we'll be doing now. We'll be going back to our Carnot refrigerator, then to understand different processes, and then we will understand why it doesn't work or why we cannot make it work. And this will lead us to a more realistic refrigeration cycle, vapor compression cycle. So, if you remember well, our Carnot refrigerator, Carnot refrigeration cycle, the schematic diagram was that, what do we have? We have a low temperature reservoir and a high temperature reservoir. So this will represent, for example, inside the cabinet of your fridge and TH will represent the surroundings, okay? The kitchen, a room, apartment or whatever. And our role in refrigeration cycle is to get heat out of the cold and send it to the hot, okay? And Clausius told us that the only way to do this, if you want to go against nature, from cold to hot, and therefore extract a QL and reject it into a QH, there is a price to pay, and the price to pay is work in, okay? So, now basically, uh, if I have to sketch a TS diagram for our Carnot refrigerator, we have a refrigerant, okay, so therefore, We'll have to go back to our bell curve, or the dome, and we are playing between two different pressure lines.
okay? So, and the schematic diagram will be that in a Carnot refrigerator, so we can still sketch something like a power cycle and reverse it because Carnot is a reversible cycle, meaning that if you turn it in one direction, you have a power cycle. You rotate it in the other direction, you have a refrigeration cycle. So then we can still use the same schematic diagram as for our power cycles, okay? So we have here something, let's say, to, to provide work. We have here kind of a heat exchanger. We will give the different names. And here we are providing work. This is for a power cycle. And we are rejecting heat here. Okay? So, now basically if you run it this way, so clockwise, this is a power cycle. Obviously, this is only for a reversible cycle. And if you run it counterclockwise, you have a refrigeration cycle. So for us, we would like to, to run it anticlockwise. So basically, we'll be going in this direction. So here, what do we have? Your food or the thing that you would like to cool down is sitting here. And you would like to extract heat. So this is your QL here. And to do this, what you are doing, you, are, you take a substance and then that will evaporate, that will have to steal heat from your food to evaporate. And we call this an evaporator. Okay. Then you will have actually to provide work here. And then your refrigerant will go typically at the back of your fridge and reject heat to the surroundings. Okay. So this will be your QH. And to reject heat, your actual refrigerant has to condense, so therefore we call this a condenser. Okay? So, now basically, if we sketch our TS diagram here, what do we have? We will have the Carnot cycle, we have two isentropic, two isothermal, so it will be this. Here are the different processes, and we are rotating anticlockwise. Okay? So, now, why actually there is a problem with our Carnot cycle? Okay? We can identify different issues, and one of them is that now, basically, we are providing work here. So, this one becomes our compressor. And this one becomes our turbine, okay? We are running it in the other direction, right? So here now we have our compressor. And here we will have our turbine. First thing, okay? If let's say we put this state one, state two, state three and state four. So this will be state one, state two, state three, and state four. The first thing we can see is that state one to state two, we are compressing. So therefore, we are using a compressor. However, you see that this is in a mixture phase, okay? And this is something we don't like, okay? We don't like basically when we have a mixture and we try to compress it. We really prefer to have liquid, so you use a pump, or a vapor, a gas, and you use a compressor. So basically, it's really problematic for us to have this point one in the mixture phase. The solution is that we will move it to the right. So our new state one will be here. And since the process remains isentropic, this will lead us to this new state two prime. So we're fixing this. Then the other thing is that you see here we have a turbine. And this is complicated. Why? Because the only lower role of the turbine 
is to create an expansion process and to reduce the pressure from three to four, okay? That's it. Ideally, uh, with the turbine, you would like to generate power, but here, basically, the difference in pressure, you are, you are not in the superheated region, right? You are close to the compressed liquid region or with qualities, very low qualities. So basically you get simply peanuts out, out of this turbine. So you are making your life very complex using complex equipment in order just to reduce your pressure. So the solution in this case is not to use a turbine. We will simplify this by simply using a valve. So here we are swapping actually, or here we are replacing an isentropic process by an isentalpic process, okay? On our TS diagram, this means that state three, now it goes like an isentalpic process to four prime, okay? So, and this is now basically our cycle. All this area is the work provided by the compressor. And this area between one prime and four prime underneath here. So this is basically QL, how much heat you are extracting uh, from actually your cabinet or from the volume, okay, where you, that you would like to cool down. So, meaning that here we went from an Carnot refrigeration cycle, which is ideal and not practical, to a vapor compression cycle. So, this is ideal vapor compression cycle. Okay?